Very good to see you. Uh, so, uh, a group of uh, Baltic and Nordic ministers just came back from, from Kiev, uh, actually directly from Kiev to Bucharest. Uh, in Kiev we had a chance uh, not only to meet uh, all the representatives of uh, Ukrainian government, uh, Mr. Kuleba, President, Prime Minister, and talk with them about all the, all the issues that they're currently facing, but also to inspect the damage that is being done on a daily basis to their in energy infrastructure. We visited uh, some of the power plants in Kiev uh, and saw how much they are affected by, by the drone attacks. So there is no doubt that today one of the questions that will be raised is how can we make sure that Ukrainian people, civilians especially, do not suffer the terror attacks that are being uh, thrown at them almost every, every day and how do they survive, survive winter. It was clear that wind was coming. Some of your colleagues were surprised that Russia is targeting the energy infrastructure. Are you well, well, honestly, we, we are not surprised. Uh, this is probably what, what I'm repeating almost every time we meet. Uh, it is clear that Russia will use terror tactics. Uh, now they're targeting energy infrastructure, civilian uh, objects. Uh, so the only goal, I, I would say there are two goals. First of all, we need to sustain the situation as it currently is. That means that Ukrainians need to have a chance to protect the most important civilian infrastructure that they have. So they need uh, air defense, missile defense, everything that we have needs to be shipped right away. Secondly, we need to support rebuilding of infrastructure because it cannot just be left without it. Because now they have a deficit from 20 to 30 percent almost every day. It means that 30 percent of people or 30 percent of time uh, is uh, they, they lack uh, electricity. If it goes up, uh, it is possible that critical infrastructure will start to be disconnected from uh, from the grid. But lastly, what we need not to forget is that Ukraine needs to win this war. If they win the war, or more more uh, more realistically, when they when they win the war. This is when the country can be safe, and this is where we actually can sustain the rebuilding. That means that the, the infrastructure that is being rebuilt, it will be safe. Are you afraid that NATO is running out of weapons? Has Ukraine, yeah. sorry, has Ukraine, Ukraine made uh, any specific request in terms of aid that you want to pass along to the other ministers? When it comes to, uh, when it comes to energy infrastructure, yes, this is uh, a specific uh, transformation stations that honestly only countries in the eastern flank have therefore Lithuania donated the first one uh, because we are changing ours and we have some something that is left and we're able to give it to, to Ukraine their appeal was to talk to all those in the eastern flank that they would do do the same thing second thing is very very simple they need heavy weapons in order to push Russians out they need heavy weapons and on the top of their list is tanks and uh, you know if I were to sum up my message today to to the ministers it would be just one word data was this declaration where is, where do you stand today uh, we had a discussion about this uh, with uh, with the representatives in in Kiev they are very seriously preparing uh, for Vilnius summit uh, I think that this is where they have expectations that a format for co continuation of political dialogue between NATO and Ukraine will be set obviously the expectation is full full membership and uh, I have to admit uh, that as it stands now Lithuania supports Ukraine running low on stockpile when it comes to weapons. Well, interestingly enough, NATO is not running low on tanks, neither on tank ammunition. So therefore, if we expand uh, the inventory of what is being sent to Ukraine, then NATO has a chance to keep supplying. Maybe there, is a diff there are some difficulties to supply specific uh, ammunition that has already been sent. It is, it is possible. I cannot you know, give you uh, specific numbers but when it comes to tanks. Uh, NATO countries basically have almost unlimited amount of ammunition for main battle tanks in, in NATO side. On the oil price cap, it seems that $62 is still too high for Lithuania. How low does the price level need to go until the EU reaches a deal? First of all, it's, it's still a theoretical price cap because the price has been falling. So, you know, this is, uh, we're talking about a ceiling that uh, currently the price is not even, even reaching. So I think that we will continue our discussion. I think that there's no no pressure on us to really to set the, 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 the price as it is now because as I mentioned the price is still lower. But from our perspective is that if we take into account that Russia's um, the price that Russia is paying for extracting oil is about twenty dollars. Uh, so the margin that we are ready to pay to Russia is still incredibly high. 
and that has to be taken into account. And this is the main debate that is going on in, in Lithuania. You know, we have to explain to our people that we're willing to leave uh, $42 to Russians per every barrel that we that we purchase. Do you think it's a deal at the EU level over this? I think that it's a very constructive uh, conversation going on in the EU, and uh, as you probably know, that Lithuania is definitely not the not the only country that it has some some doubts, and I'm sure that the outcome will be favorable, but not to Russians.